Okay, so here, here's the thing. I thought about this, map, map to mentoring. Okay, how many have ever made a map? What, what do you have to do to make a map? Okay, you need a starting point and an ending point. Okay, fair enough. That's landmarks. A landmarks. Okay, what else? Roads. Roads. Okay, what else? Topical geography. Topical geography. Does it help to have been there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you to think about this map to mentoring. So really mentoring, if you boil it down to its most basic form, it's taking someone somewhere where you've already been. Because... Mentoring, we, we have a society, we have a world that's lost because they really haven't had anyone that will help show them where they want to go. Because that, that's really why we look for maps, right? I mean, do you remember in the old days before they had GPS on your phone and things like that, you'd actually go to AAA and ask for maps before you went on your trip? Do you, do you remember that? You'd go... You go down to triple, AAA and you ask them, handing a map of these little places and, and you would plan your thing. And the reason that that map helped you was because someone had already been there. Someone had already put the landmarks. If you, if you go to a brand new city on vacation, you know, you go get the one page map that has all the highlighted areas that you might want to visit, right? I mean, so a map to mentoring. Okay. Now here's the thing, a lot of the principles that I talk about will work for girls, but I'm, my name's Sean Backus, I'm a children's pastor at Sound Life Church, I've been a children's pastor for 21 years, and I'm also the director for Royal Rangers, and so I, I'm unashamed to talk about Royal Rangers, it's been a big part of my life, and it's helped me with my map to success, and, and I, it's helped my boys, and it's helped a lot of other boys in our church, you know, with that, because mentoring. We, we, we want no pastor, if you went to a pastor and said, hey, do, do you want your men in your church to do a better job mentoring the young men in your church? They would say yes. Okay, so I'm going to skip around because you guys all know how to read. I mean, right? So you could, you could read my handout. Some of that's good and some of it's not. But if you turn second page, we're going to look at, it's going to say number five elephant video. And underneath it, it's going to say Titus chapter 2, 1 through 8. How, how many think if we're really going to do an effective job of mentoring, we should probably look at how the Bible says we should do it? Yes. I mean, right? I mean, the, the, the Bible is one of the greatest maps that we have, right? You know, when, when we, we say, hey, to live, to, to live for God and to, to be a person, a Christ follower, what, what does that mean? means we're following the example of Jesus, right? We're, we're following the example or the map that was set out for us. How many think that Jesus was probably a pretty effective mentor, especially with 12 people? You know, I, I think that, I think pr really right there de declares how awesome a mentor Jesus was because, you know what, I'm not even sure that I could do it with 12 people. I would need a smaller group. Somehow, you know, we, we know that he had the, div the divine in there too. So he was able to do something with 12 people. I, I'm just trying to say find someone, right, and partner up with people and, and find people that are passionate about doing it. Find people who are experts in their field and then do this because this is biblical perspective. So here we go, Titus chapter 2, 1 through 8. As for you, Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching, teaching the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others to be heavy or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands, then they will not be ashamed of the word of God. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely, as you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity, seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching cannot be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. How many think in our current climate, how many think that's all the more important, isn't it? We need to be Christ followers. That, that, that's what we need to be. And you know what? Whether we want to believe, believe it or not, we're all mentors. Because it's a little bit 
Uh, being a mentor is a little bit like being an example. You know, we, we have sports figures out there that say, well, I'm not really, I'm not really a role model. I say fooey on them. How many, how many understand that? I mean, they have a platform, they have influence, and it's their responsibility either to influence people to do good or to influence people to do bad, right? I mean, those are really the only choices. So how do we create that mentorship relationship in our church? Okay, well, here, here's the thing. And I, I don't have a lot of points in here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look back. And if you go back to the front page, I made one statement here. The best time to build a man is while he is still a boy. The best time to build a woman is when she's still a little girl. And I'm just going to use my, my son as an example. I have an 18-year-old son. He is 6'1", 250 pounds. He is physically my superior. He's faster, better looking, the whole deal. More athletic than I ever was. And I can tell you when I found this out. So 16 years old, we're going up the stairs. He's on the upstairs. He kind of sassed me a little bit. So I gave him a real a good one, a good game on the way up the stairs, just teasing him, right? He spun around, grabbed me by the wrist, because he caught me kind of midstream when I tried to give him the good game. <laughs> Got me by the wrist, wrist control, had my wrist pinned up against my body, and held me against the wall. And he goes, don't do that, Dad. <laughs> and, and, and I went, I went, whoa! You know, and I, I kind of joked and stuff, right? And I'm joking, I'm like, oh, you're pretty tough, you know? And then, and then we kind of both laughed. He went to his room, and then I went to the bathroom, and I kind of had to work over my wrist because I'm like, dude, that guy's strong. <laughs> and I think in that moment, I realized he was physically my superior. <laughs> good, good input, good input. Okay, so here we go. So why is mentoring important with boys and girls? Because if we can help train, help model, be that example. How many know there comes a point? Now, I gave a funny example for my son. He's not out of control. He, he buys into the, he's bought into the Bacchus team. You know, that, that was playful what we were doing. But how many know that there are parents that come to the church and they explain a physical altercation like that that was not playful? And it's like, my, my son or daughter isn't having anything to do with what I'm trying to sell in my home. So a math, uh, map to mentorship, how many think we have to start early? Okay, so we start early and get people on the correct path to begin with, right? And then here's the thing. We need to have people who have already been there. And here's the deal. It's messy, it's scary, but how many know that we have to platform those people? Because what they went through, if they can help someone else, it brings value to the struggle and the kind of the tribulation that they went through in their home, right? Does that make sense? So we need to model that. We need to model the correct. We need to, we need to set that standard early. We need to do that because I'll tell you what, when did my son buy in? He bought in when he was three, when I could reach out and grab his wrist and make sure that he wasn't going to be out, out of control. And I describe it like this. How, how, many, how many enjoy horses? My uncle raises cutting horses. And cutting horses are trained, so they fixate on a cow, and they will move side to side, frontwards, backwards. They kind of just like bounce around. And that rider is just kind of there, just perched on them, kind of for dear life. There is an incredibly trusting relationship between someone who rides a cutting horse and their horse. Because that horse is darting and moving and doing things that, that really you can't steer a horse to do that. You have to trust them just to react to that cow. And, and if you ever see it, if you get a chance, watch it on TV. Because it's amazing because the relationship between that rider and that horse, how many know that horse could buck that guy off, stomp on him, you know, do whatever? Because that horse is so strong. There's a trusting relationship that is made between those two things. I mean, that horse... That's why, that's why we say the horse and its rider, right? I mean, there's a connection. And, and I think that, that that's a lot like mentoring. How many can understand why I use that as an example? There has to be a partnership. There has to be a trust. There has to be 
a safe place to fail because you have to let kids fail and then you have to help them but you need a safe place to fail you don't want them to fail in catastrophic ways to where it causes massive damage or trauma you want it to you want them to fail in safe ways so that they could do and then I'm just gonna read a couple of stats compared to girls boys are three times more likely to be registered drug addicts four times more likely to be diagnosed as emotionally disturbed five times more likely to commit suicide six times more likely to have learning disabilities and 12 times more likely to commit murder how many think young men need a mentor and here here's the thing I'm gonna I'm gonna let just into a little glimpse in my life how many know that, the, that, that families are fractured? We know that in our church. Divorce, divorce, the rates of divorce are almost the same inside the church as they are outside the church. I mean, the, the family is fractured. And I believe that is an attack from the enemy because the enemy knows that if he can destroy families, that he can get a foothold. And that, that's what I believe. He's, that, I believe that's targeting. And, and, and so here, here's the thing with, with young girls and young boys, we need to get them started on a path. We need to communicate with their parents. We need to model good parenting. We need to model consistency. We need to model a safe place to fail. And we are responsible to create that map for them. And the only way that I know how to do that is through relationship. Because they don't want just the paper. <laughs> they want the Yelp reviews, right? They, they want to know the 147 people that have said this is a good restaurant. D does that make sense? So we have to platform people. We have to find people, and we have to platform them in a way that says, hey, this person isn't perfect, but this is one situation where they did it right and got success. How many understand what I'm saying? You can't put people up and say, hey, these people do it wrong, so do it their way. That's not what I'm saying. You have to celebrate the victories. You have to celebrate independently. Because how many know that I make mistakes as a parent? And if you don't think so, I could give you either one of my son's or my daughter's telephone number, <laughs> and you could ask them, and they would tell you. They would go, oh, my dad's far from perfect. <laughs> and I'd go, oh. But it's true. How many? We, that's part of growth being a... Part of me with the ability to be a mentor is to, uh, to be able to admit when I make a mistake. Because it's not when, it's, it's not if, it's when. Because I will make a mistake, but I have to show my mettle after the mistake is made. Okay, and then I'm going to give you two things. That I'm going I'm to oversimplify this just with men and women. So this is under number two. Women at Starbucks. How many know that... I'm going to pick on one of my friends here. Okay, so you don't know me, do you? If I sat at Starbucks and we were just like knee to knee, touching, and we were looking at each other, would that make you uncomfortable? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I would agree. It would be awkward, right? Even with my friends, even with a close friend, I would never sit, you know, knee to knee, touching. But if you go to Starbucks and see women, <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be done, right? face-to-face -face. you know that face-to-face -face interaction that you know I can see the emotion and I can see the intimacy that we're sharing right now what a boys what do boys and guys do bench of a truck facing the same way right I mean I want to have a good conversation with my 18 year old son it better be in a car he can't move because the car is moving and he doesn't have to look at me right we don't look at each other we're driving side by side you know Okay, when do you have a great experience with your grandpa? Side by side on the riverbank, right? Football game. Stadium, right? Ladies. Knee to knee, touching, looking. How many think that that's why husband and wives have trouble sometimes? Because it's like, honey, why do you deal with me side by side? And my wife looks at me and goes, um, you're going to look at me face to face because this is intimacy between the two of us. Right? And she's sitting back there. So, so, but, 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 but do, you under, do you understand what I mean? Do you, do you, so, face to face versus side by side, just so that you know. If boys operate, if you can figure out a way to do things with them side by side, because they want to copy, you know, working on a car, you know, they'll do, you know, working on a project, two people building a model. I mean, we could go through all the examples. And then, yeah. It may just be me because I'm old, but 
But my dad, growing up, if he had anything serious to say to me, which is pretty often, <laughs> <laughs> Look at me when I'm talking to you. But did it make it confrontational? No, it made me more fearful than my dad. I knew I, he's about to say something that I best will listen to. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. But I'm not, I'm not going to argue with that. I'm older man, exactly what you said, I agree. But I'm the same way because that's the way I was raised. If I got a boy, a really young man in my class, and... I'm trying to straighten them out is look at me while I'm talking to you. Right. I, I agree. But I'm going to push back just a little bit. Can I push back just to the idea? The, at times, when we do that with boys, it becomes confrontational. True. And so, I'm over, I already admitted that I was oversimplifying. Does that make sense? There are not, I'm, I'll be honest, there are times where I say, hey, son, look at me. I want you to know very clear that I'm upset with you. But if I'm going to impart a truth that's just positive and I'm going to create the most basic form of communication, I believe with, that side by side is more effective for men. Where I'm saying that just, we, we don't talk about the Seahawks face to face. Right. Now, <laughs> ladies will, will talk about whatever they talk about and they'll do it face to face the entire time. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm oversimplifying. So I can understand because when things are very serious, but then that's when I sit down, that's when I lower my voice, that's when I do everything else to not make it confrontational. Right. Yeah. That, that's the difference between right? discipline and discipleship. Yes. <laughs> discipline is the, the kind of confrontational yeah. discipleship is side by side. Side by side. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair. That's a good way to articulate it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Then can we try? Because did I make it? You did. It's only 10, or excuse me, 220, so you got 220. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Rangers have to count these animals to protect them. Okay, can we go to the beginning now? Yeah. Did it not go to the beginning? No, it kind of. It for some reason it's saying that it's coming through the TV, but it's really not. So. Okay, so we'll be real quiet. That's hard for me. I know. Uh oh, I know. The wife's laughing. See, see how quiet we can be. to protect them. 10% of the rhino population was being wiped out, 39 during the killing spree. Dead rhinos started turning up all over the park, and it clearly wasn't the work of poachers. The rhinos' horns hadn't been touched. The park rangers soon found themselves cast as cops conducting an investigation, and their first findings led them to believe that if they were to round up the usual suspects, they'd need a pretty large holding pen. That's because this is one of the prime suspects, a killer caught on home video terrorizing a group of tourists. It turned out that young male elephants were behind the murders of Killingsburg's rhinos. First, because you didn't want to believe. Yeah, you don't want to believe that an elephant uh, is capable of killing a rhino. Why would they do it? Well, like two little delinquents from urban jungles, they'd grown up without role models. They don't have a father. Everyone needs a dad. <laughs> I think everyone needs a role model. And the these elephants that left the herd had no role model and uh, no idea of how to what appropriate elephant behavior is. There was no way to relocate these large adults, so a tough decision was made. Kill the adults, save the children were easy to transport to other parks. I think it was a good idea. Dr. Haim Ebedes was the government veterinarian who approved the relocations back then. Did it occur to you at the time that you were proposing this, this notion that moving young elephants without their parents could be problematic? Uh, I didn't think about it. But the program created a whole generation of traumatized orphans thrown together without any adults to calm them down or teach them how to behave. And the solution turned out to be the biggest Big Brother program in the world. The Rangers went looking for big daddies, role models to keep the youngsters from mating at an early age when they can't handle 
those raging hormones. The problem you had here was young bull elephants becoming increasingly violent. And your solution was to bring in some even bigger bull elephants. It was like teenagers running on the loose. That's right. And, and all of a sudden, Dad comes home. Suddenly, he's there. And Dad is very obvious to them. And in Dad's presence, we, we predicted they wouldn't try and assert themselves. And now, was it, was it just Dad's size, or did Dad's behavior influence them? Dad's behavior as well. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay, so here's the thing. Okay, how important is mentoring? I know we're not dealing with elephants and rhinos, but how many know that we have kids, you know, first, first time you get a kid that misbehaves in your children's ministry, especially boys, because they're the ones that can be a handful, right? They're the ones that, you know, act out, you know. For, first thing, maybe, maybe we need to think about, okay, what is missing in their life, right? Because we start doing these things, and guess what you're going to find out? You're going to find out, oh, they're acting out and not behaving properly because their parents are getting a divorce. You know, um, dad moved to the East Coast. They're now alone with mom. You know, dad passed away. You know, we start seeing these relationships. We know that that family unit is ordained by God, right? I mean, it was the plan that older women train younger women. Older men train younger men. I mean, right? We read that in Titus. That's the biblical model. But we know in our society that that's fractured, correct? So how do we do that? So that's why I say it's very important for us as parents, because I'm a parent first, you know, how, how do I create a map for how my sons view how I should treat women? It's how I treat their mom. You know, right. And that's, that's mentoring, right? It's mentoring as long as I get their buy-in, right? I mean, that's how we create that mentoring thing. You know, it's me and the boys going and sitting at Buffalo Wild Wings. And while we're at Buffalo Wild Wings, just not talking about sports, but talking about, hey, when we get home, we need to thank Sarah because she let us go. You know, it's, it's that, that articulating the appreciation and just training them on the little, little things. I thought it was funny, you know, so what was their solution? They got all these juvenile delinquents. They're trying to find their own way, right? So it's like, hey, I'm bigger, I'm tougher. You know, I, I can, you can go watch. It's like a 30-minute thing on 60 Minutes. You can, the, the site is there on the YouTube, and you could see the whole extended thing. But they're going and just like, just driving these rhinos crazy, you know. So the rhino's there, and they got this confrontation, and then, then the elephant knocks the rhino down, and then he kneels on it, and then, then you end up with a dead rhino, and, 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 you know, all these things. And then all of a sudden, they introduce a role model. They introduce a mentor that says, hey, th there's, a, there's a right behavior that's supposed to be happening. You know, you're not supposed to be picking on rhinos and chasing after tour buses. You know, these are the things that you do to become the, the, the rhino that is the king of the herd, so to speak, right? Modeling that. And then all of a sudden, these young rhinos, these young, the rhinos are living, and the young elephants finally have a role model and a mentor, and they start to shape up. I, I find it fascinating, you know, because how, how many times do we find that with an unruly boy at church if we can sit them with Sam Backus, my dad is like the, the rough kid whisperer. That, that, that's, that's my dad. He's super calm. He, he talks slow. He has a low southern drawl. He's from Oklahoma. So he has like kind of a calming effect on people anyhow. You know? And so, so he can find the distracted, one, the distracted boy. And then my dad's always got stuff in his pockets to fiddle with. I mean, he's got some polished rocks in his pocket or a little piece of leather strip or, or you know, some magnifying glass or, or something. But he can always find 
the boy to go sit by and he's a calming influence on and he's mentoring and he's like, hey, you really need to be hearing because what they're communicating in front is really great stuff and it, it could change your life and what do you want to be and you know, what, what, what is God doing in your life? I mean, my dad has these great conversations and, and I'm like, well, we'll come back from something. He's like, hey, I talked to Aiden and Aiden told me all this stuff. I'm like, what? I can't even get Aiden to sit still for five minutes. When, when did he share all that stuff with you? Oh, I was just sitting back there against the wall with him, you know, after he got in trouble and he's just kind of there with me. And my dad takes that very seriously because he's like, I can make a difference. How, ma how many think that there's probably some people in your church that have the map pretty well drawn out? We just haven't asked them, right? Because I'll tell you what especially grandpas. How many think that being a grandpa, all it is, that if they're retired, their life has really turned into show and tell? And that, that's what it is. That's what retirement is, is show and tell. I mean, it's like the adventurous version of show and tell. How, how, many, how many think that that would work as a mentor with, with a boy? I mean, my dad drags out stuff, and my, my, my boys... I mean, you want to know who has the coolest stuff. I mean, we, we tease. So I'm an only child. So I'm with my dad one day, and my son's there, and he goes, Hey, Grandpa, when you die, what's going to happen to all your snap-on tools? Because my, my dad told him how these tools are lifetime guarantee. They're going to last for forever. You know, if one breaks, you just take it down to the snap-on truck. They give you a new one. And, and my dad goes, Well, nobody's really asked me for, about that. So I guess when I die, I, I guess I'll give them to you. And Taylor's like, cool. And I'm like, hey, Dad, I'm standing right here. You know, <laughs> what's going on? And, and he's like, well, you didn't, you didn't show interest, you know. So, so we tease now. I could be at Cabela's with my dad, and he could be standing in line. And I'm like, hey, what are you going to do with that when you die? Can I, can I have that when you die? And, and, and we tease back and forth. That's like a joke in my family. But that, that's what I'm trying to say is he has that flavor, that show and tell, that that um, care, that concern. He has a life map. I mean, he has loved my mom, and he, he's, res he's raised a halfway successful child, and, 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 you know, and, and all these things. He has a life map, and he takes it very seriously with the other young dads in his church. And it's not only real rangers. I mean, that, that's my dad's life mission, you know, is, is that. And so I've kind of caught that, and I'm trying to do that with young dads in our church. Because many times I ask them, and they haven't had the role model that I have. They, they haven't had that. They haven't had the map. But if we don't give them the map, how can we scold them when they get lost? The, is that fair? Can this, can this group understand that in the fact that we have to give people the map if we want them to find their way? And is it messy? Absolutely. Is it difficult? Sometimes. But I'm going to give you the third word. Is it rewarding? Oh, my goodness. I told this in my, I told one of the highlights. I have a new highlight in my ministry career. I have a little boy in my church. He is a handful. I'm just going to tell you that. I love him, but he's a handful. He never does anything the first time. You have to ask him two and three times. I get to talking with him and talking to his dad. Him and his, his mom and dad are going through a divorce. The dad has never really had a mentor. He never had a father figure that really taught him how to be a dad. So he's a, a rougher in his duties as a dad. Obviously, he's had some hardship even in his marriage, and that's impacted his boy. But his boy, we're, I'm in his dad's small group. So we're in a small group together. So we're sitting at a small group, and, and the little boy comes stomping in, interrupts right in the middle. And his dad kind of snapped at him. And I thought, I just kind of said a prayer. I'm like, okay, God, what, what is this about? Because I'm, I'm kind of watching this go down, and it's kind of making me uncomfortable. Cause, and, and then finally, Braden goes, but Dad... I'm just trying to tell you that the show on the TV is one that I'm not allowed to watch. And his dad, how many know that that kind of, his dad kind of crumpled a little bit. 
because he's like, oh, I kind of chewed on him, and, and you know, but he was actually trying to do something good. And so I praised my tough little boy to his dad. I'm like, man, you should be proud of that. Because he could have sat in that room and watched a show that you, he knew you didn't want him to watch. He could have stayed back there. But he came and interrupted, and he created a, he tried to do what was right. And his dad, his posture changed. So his posture kind of changed. And he goes, you know, you're right. And then it was over. So we went home, and the next morning I woke up, there was like a nice text message on my phone. And, and this is what the dad said. The dad said, hey, thank you for helping me compliment my own son. Because when we left, I grabbed Braden by the shoulders and held him. And I go, you want to know what? Your dad is proud of you for making the right decision. Because the, the dad didn't really know what to do. He had never had anyone model for him how to praise his son. You know, it's always like, ah, ah, ah. that's the communication. And so the dad, in a very long text message, which is kind of unusual for guys to have a long text message, because <laughs> mine are like three, four words, you know, um, dinner, five o'clock. You know, that, that's, a, that's a common text message for me. But it was a long text message, and he just said, no one had ever modeled for me how to compliment my son. And he went on, I just kind of swelled up. I went in and showed my wife. I went in right away and I'm like, look at this text message. And she's like, that's fantastic. And I thought, it's happening. Now, is it hard? Yes, but a map. He readily admitted, he said, I don't have a map on how to mentor my own son. So I'm going to try to help him with the map. Because how many know the elephants? They needed a map on how they were supposed to behave. And that's what, and I think this is pretty transferable. I mean, we got the girls ministry director here too. It's true with girls too, right? The, the teenage, you got you to gotta, you gotta get that out of the way early because it's only harder when they're older, right? So, so there you go. All right, I'm, I'm done. Now I want to interact here with you guys. Okay, so is that fair? This handout's here. My information's on it. That, that video is there. You know, some other things are on there, so you could read that on your own time. But l let's talk about this. Okay, mentorship. What, what are some things that you think we need on the map? You know, okay, so we got a map of Yakima. You know, it better have Miner's Burgers on it, right? I mean, you know, so that, that's a highlight for coming here. What, what are some things, if we're going to have a map for mentorship in our church, what are some things that we need, some pins that we have to put on that map as attractions? Troubleshooting section. Okay, troubleshooting. That's kind of going backwards, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying you need a key for this thing. You, 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 Especially with teenagers, because there's not all one size fits all. Oh, yeah. I'm in perfect agreement there. I got three kids, they're all very different. Jeez, yeah. If anybody wants to hear, I'll tell you. I'll say. Sarah Sarah brought it up. So I, I equate my kids as cheese. My oldest boy is sharp cheddar. You either like him or you don't. My second boy, people love my oldest boy. I mean, they're like, oh, my goodness, he's the best ever. Or, oh, my goodness, what do you do with that kid? He's just, he is sharp cheddar, like aged sharp cheddar. And then, then my, my younger boy, he is, he's Colby Jack. I mean, in a pinch, you could even put it on pizza. You, you understand what I mean? I mean, he's just like, everybody loves him. He's just like, easy going, doesn't ever get in trouble. He's just smooth, right? And then my youngest, my daughter, is Cheese Whiz. Because she is party in a can. I mean, that is it. Jaden is Cheese Whiz. I mean, party in a can. And, and so... So I, have a, so I have all three of them. I mean, when, when yeah, Strong-Willed Child, yeah, they wrote the book about my oldest boy. I mean, that, that, that's him. I mean, yeah. And then my second one, very compliant, you know, learned a lot from his brother. Hey, why don't you do that? Well, I watched Taylor get busted for that over and over and over again. I ain't doing that. You know, and then Jaden, well, I did it because it was fun. You know, and I'm like, ah! So... 
Anyhow, so there you go. So mentoring. What are some other things? Troubleshooting? Right. So you need someone who has the information that you can go to, right? Okay, so, you, so really you need a network. You need AAA, right? So when the trouble hits, you know... Yes. Yeah. I think it's good for us to not think that we know everything and to be able to outsource freely. Yeah. Correct. And that builds additional relationships, which are good. Because we can't be the only center of the web all the time. So I agree with that. Anything else? What other pins do we need on the map? I think one of the key things we need is a starting point. Um, because I, just a prime example, I had a little boy in my ministry. Family was new to the church. This kid comes in and he is like all over the place. And I'm thinking to myself, what is with his parents? Why are they let? Found out he's a foster kid yeah. who had never had stability in his life, had never had, and it totally changed how I interact with him. And the change in him from being in, going from a not stable situation where he was neglected, he was abused, to being in a situation where he had the, he had the church not only investing investing in him, but he had amazing foster parents that ended up getting permanent custody of him. Um, totally changes that look, but not knowing what his starting point was, was catastrophic, because I could have taken that and gone, well, you know, just given up on him, but but finding out here's where his starting point is, where he's coming from, he's not just like a super hyperactive kid that his parents let him get, get away from everything, he has his special needs, and so knowing sure. where the kid is starting from, you mentioned that a little bit earlier about like parents of divorce or yeah. um, different things like that, um, so just even knowing where they're where they're coming from is huge. So kind of that would be like the scale, one inch equals seven miles or whatever, <laughs> right? I mean, the, you know, for different kids, the scale of the map, you know, you, even with Google, you have to roll out on your mouse to get it bigger to figure out where the starting point is, right? So I agree with that. That's good. That's good, a starting point. Noah? Spiritual milestones be so like salvation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Having those pins. Sure. <laughs> Yes, and especially with men, getting men open to talk about that. It can't be just about woodworking, right? It has to, you know, you, ha you have to say, okay, you know what, it's teaching, teaching people to introduce their spiritual story. Because how many think that's good for the mentor and for the person being mentored, right? So to introduce our spiritual story, good, good answer. You know, and, and not only just salvation, baptism, the Holy Spirit, when you're baptized either. It could be like when God helped you through a difficult time or, or you know, a miracle, you know, or, or something where, you know, to, to have those landmarks, right, to put God on the map is important. Right, right on. of where they were at starting point A to where they're going to mm -hmm. be, but, but taking a break. Because if you work for, towards one goal and you're exhausted by the time you get there, it, 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 you, you, know, you lose some of the enjoyment of it. Right. Uh, if you have the rest stops or the parks to where you'd be like, hey, you know, you did a great job here, you did a great job here, and, and building that, that's very important to kids. Because if you just go point A to point B, Sometimes they need that encouragement and to look back. Yeah! Oh, what you did here? Remember what you did here? Remember what you did here? And this is where we're at now. And to celebrate it. Yes. That's great. Yeah. Celebrate it. In that, would it be, so my question is, like, is that something you're talking about, like looking back to or along the way setting short-term goals? Because well, you, you, have, you can you do either way of a short-term goal, but it's one of those things is you periodically, you know, it's like you pull over and you're like, hey, just wanted to look at the scene and wanted to see what we've passed. What did we, you know, we'll talk about what we see. Like when I go on a big trip with my kids, especially with my son Jason, we'll get out and be like, hey, what did you think of that last place that we stopped off or whatever? And just communicating. And But like I said, in, in, in life's long way of going someplace, encourage them along the way and take that time to stop to remind them. Because I've had some kids in, in my church group where I'm just like, oh, Lord, please, you know, help me to have the patience to get through all of this. Uh, and then I look back, like, and my wife would be like, you know, but they've grown so much from this point to this point. Yes. And then I get to sit so, down, I get to sit down and be like, hey, you know what? Yeah, we had a rough day today, but you know what? It wasn't as bad as when you did it like six months ago when we had this, you know, this blow up. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. To celebrate that and to communicate how far you've gone. That, that's a great answer. That's a great answer. 
Yeah, definitely. Kind of like the, the tracker map when you're flying to Hawaii or whatever, right? And they show where you're at in the pro Oh, we're getting close. You know, look at how far we've gone, you know. So that that's good. That's good. That's that's good on the map. What else? What else on the map? I think like the parts of when when you're on a map and then you see the city and then in the lower corner of the map it's an expansion. Yeah. And so it comes into the details of of just what your relationship is. So you know that you're going to hit this milestone eventually. And I'm I'm just going to say this because this is what I'm going through with my oldest. Right? Mm -hmm. Is this whole, we're going through cyberbullying, and then so we're hearing about sexting and all that. So I know, and, and I've been working up to that, knowing that eventually that we're, we're constantly in communication about the human body and the things that God gave us and, you know, what they're used for and, and trying to tread that but appropriate for age. But knowing that I've got the tools and resources and other people that have traveled that before me so I can expand that and go into that city and look, oh, well, maybe we should stop here. Maybe we should stop here. There's a restaurant for food here. That's where good. We can get all that information so we can gather our things so we can continue our journey. I mean, that's fabulous, isn't it? So. We like that when the map has that, you know, okay, this is the downtown section. This is where, you know, slow down to take in more of what's going on here, you know. Cruise by on the freeway, but when you get to this place, pay closer attention. Mm -hmm. And how many think a veteran parent can help with that, right? Yeah. Hey, this is the time to, to, you know, take it out of fifth, you know, <laughs> downshift in, you're pulling off the highway, mm -hmm. slow down, because you're after traffic, because here's the deal, you go through traffic high speed, what happens? <laughs> you have an accident. You have an accident. How many know even good parents get in accidents with their kids, right? They, you know, they, you know, we, we have this, you know, children obey your parents and Lord for this is right, you know, honor your father and mother because this is the first commandment with a promise. The next verse is fathers don't exasperate your children, right? Really that means, Sean, slow down, you know, slow down and take advantage of an actual teachable moment. Don't try to force teaching into everything, right? Because I think, I think that's important is to capitalize on the teachable moment when it presents itself. You know, and how many think it would be better than instead of trying to force a teachable moment, to pray for God to create a teachable moment? Because yeah. yeah. that's one thing people need to be mentored in, right? Because yeah. rookie parents make rookie mistakes, right? Because no one has taught them, hey, pray for that opportunity the next day to really capitalize on that teachable moment. So we have to model that for them, huh? We, we have to do that. That's the good answer, though. This is, this is working out better than I thought, man. This is good. Right on. I think transparency is a huge thing, especially in my unique situation of not, you know, growing up in church or anything like that. Obviously, my shell is very shocking to most from the outward appearance and, you know, whatnot. But I just think really... You know, sharing experiences with them, and you know, hey, I was there one time. I come from a broken family. I had three different stepdads. You know, I was abused by this one and treated very well by this one, and stuff like that. But I think transparency is a huge thing, just to get them to open up mm -hmm. and really figure out where they're from, but not really in a real, you know, probing manner. It's just you know, key questions that really. You know, challenge them to really think and stuff like that. I know it's been very effective in, uh, you know, kids camp situation. Yeah. With having other boys from other churches get place <coughs> in ours, then obviously I've got relationships with all these boys and I know what they're about. They come in and they might be, you know, everybody in their church. They, you know, the only coloring that's on the skin is when you accidentally hit them with a marker or something. All right. They're very intrigued by that. Yeah. You know, and they just think that, man, this guy's kind of hard, but once they actually see my heart, you know, and that transparency, like, you know, I was there. I didn't grow up with a father. You know, I know right. what your difficulties are, and, you know, this is the way that my one stepfather put me back on the track and, you know, really opened the map for me of where I can really go and also how I can be effective. Yeah, breaking the cycle, huh? Yeah, totally. I admire that. Yeah. I admire that. I admire that. Okay, great. I'm just being willing also um, to if you are the wrong map for that person. So, like, he grew up outside of the church, but I've been raised in a Christian home. I was homeschooled in a Christian home. So 
So we're two totally different maps. And being willing to say, oh, hey, I think you should go talk to this person. And just hearing part of their story and going, oh, this would totally fit with this person. Being willing to hand that off to another person when the time is right. Yeah. So they're driving, they're off, heading off of your map. And you're like, I don't have anything left. Let go talk to that person. And, and being able to hand that off, I think, is really important. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think one of the things, too, is like, if you're planning a trip, like, as an adult, uh, we, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Do we take the time as the people that we want to bring along on the trip, do we ask them where do they want to go? Mm. You know, if they have something on the map that they want to, and we're going to drive by it, do we say we don't have time to stop there, we need to hit this? Because if we want to take somebody on a trip with us, we want it to be enjoyable for them, too. So finding out what... You know, especially like in, in Rangers, when you talk about it, yeah. like, there's merits for almost everything. Like, I remember teaching them how to do a paintball merit yeah. um, and stuff like that. So, if you're mentoring somebody, find out the things that they like to do. Because yeah. if you're going to take them on a trip, if they're just basically walking around with you, I mean, of course, you, you have the destination that you want them to get to. But if you can find out some of the places they want to stop along the way, and if there are appropriate places to stop in their life, mm -hmm. take that time to stop there and, and, you know, to let them enjoy that part. Yeah, the detour. Be willing to embrace the detour and to, and to embrace their feelings. How many think? I'm I'm gonna use a word. How many think dudes need that? Right? Does that does that make sense? Do you understand why I chose that word? You know, you know, some guys they're you know, ugh. You know, we have to we have to ask them. You know, have them buy in because you know children's ministry isn't just about kids. How many know we, I went to Chad's class and Chad's like doing all the hours of a week, right? A mom and a dad have so many more hours of influence. I'm really there just to help them and support them because they're the primary. So me plugging in, you know, a, a, a new Christian that wants to be a great dad with a veteran Christian that wants to be a great dad and they can learn from each other and that mentorship and that. But, you know, getting them, getting them on the same map and the same scale and partnering together and really doing life in community, right? And, and saying, hey, I'm lost. And then I'm going to give you one last thing for my, because we're running out of time, right? What we got? Yeah, well, we got, we got three minutes and then we got to go over there because want, we want to get over there. Okay, so here, here's my dad. So my dad was a great parent. And I'm going to tell you why he was a great parent. Not because he did all the parenting. Because my dad figured out really, really early on that I couldn't hear some of the things that he was saying. Why? Because he was my dad. When my dad said it, it sounded like this. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> right? And I, the eye roll, the frustration, you know, I'm like, whatever. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then my dad would get mad and I would be disrespectful and mad. My dad figured out very early on, I need to surround my son with other men in my church that are saying the same thing as me. Because I can remember one time he laughed at me. I came bursting home from church because I had a great Sunday school teacher. I came bursting home from church and I was like, hey dad, you got to hear this, man. Blah, 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 blah. And I just like poured my guts out, right? And he's like, he laughed. And I was kind of insulted at first. And, and then he smiled at me and goes, we had that conversation, Sean. You just couldn't hear it. You know, and I'm like, serious? Because what you said totally didn't come across the way that this guy said it. D does that make sense? But my dad realized, okay, maybe my son can't hear it from me, but he could hear it from my friends. And he got me with his godly friends and his friends that were different because we can hear it different from someone else. So my dad was a great parent and a great mentor because he released me to other people that were saying the same thing. <laughs> it, it, more than we can do by ourselves, right? And, and, you know, that could be an aunt or an uncle. That could be a grandpa. That could be a grandma. That could be, you know, a lot of different people in there. But how, how many know that's true? If we could teach people to say, hey, you know what? Maybe your son or your daughter just can't hear that from you. Surround them with other people that are saying the same thing. And then maybe they'll bust through the door and say, man, you won't believe this awesome truth that I just learned. And, th and they can chuckle at their kid because they love him. Because my dad didn't chuckle at me because he was frustrated. He, he, he laughed and embraced the moment 
of, see, I did good. Yeah. You know, I did good by getting them with these other people. So, so there you go. There you go. Anything else? Okay. neighborhood boys that I mean I personally know they don't have a father in their house and stuff like that so they just shoot from the hip all the time and then we've got these other two boys that are twins and the church, this kind of exposure to them they're just like hands in their face mm-hmm. and they're just like can we just talk about Jesus now like, <laughs> and I took that back to the rest of our team and they said you know I think it's really beneficial for those kids that have just grown up with nothing but the truth to be exposed to, you know, we'll say street kids. Yep. So then that way, you know, once they do get to that age where they're going to kind of go out on their own, they're not so shell-shocked by it. But it's like, you know, just trying to show them, like, you know, hey, we all have our own opinions, but, you know, the world spoke. And, oh, yeah. You know, Trump, Trump is our leader now, you know. I said, but the important part for us is young Christian men and us as mentors, like, we need to band together and we need to be praying that yeah. God can change his heart. And being an example. Of course, that totally, you know, he was just like, well, I don't think God can change his heart. And I said, I can guarantee you if God can change my heart, he can change Trump's heart. See, but you used yourself. Yeah. And thank you for doing that. Thank yeah. you for doing that. Because it's kind of funny. You want to talk about a strange match mashup, man. I grew up in the church. You know, I, I, you know, hooked on phonics. You know, that was the most dangerous thing I was in. You know, and then Sarah and and both of our rings. It's kind of funny. So inside my ring, it says um, "broken pieces made whole." You know, and and you know, if you ever have a chance, we we'd love to tell you our story. But you know, through different places, we arrived at the same place on a map. And now we're partnered, going in the same car, the same direction, which I'm excited about. And she's been a healing influence on my boys. And, and hopefully I've been a godly example of a man in, your, in our daughter's life now as we partner together. So, you know, it, it's interesting, those things. But to be honest and to, to share and be transparent and to be real. Because the, the world sees so much phony you know, part of the problem we have with this election is the media. You know, I mean, uh, I have to laugh. I mean, how, how many think the media was truthful in this thing? You know, none of us would raise our hand, right? It's, it's you know, how do we burrow through what they say to find the truth? So for us to be real and for us to be, you know, plugged into God and to, and to pointing to Him, right? Because it's not really, hey, look at me. You know, Paul said a pretty example, you know, pretty good. It's like, hey, come along behind me, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, that, that's the thing. So I, I appreciate that. Hey, thank you guys for listening. And I'm going to do one thing real quick. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing on you guys. Can I do that real quick? So, dear God, we thank you for the people in this class. I thank you for the discussion. Wow, that's awesome. I'm going to go home and and write notes on this for the next time that that this is teaching. Thank you for my heart that was challenged as well. And, Lord, I pray that you would use these people. We came to this this class so we could learn. Lord, help us to, to be an example and to mentor others. Help us to show them the map. Help us to put them on the right right path and lord we would pray uh, i pray that as we agree together that all of us would find success with someone so it would encourage us and build our faith bless them we thank you in jesus name we pray amen amen Amen. thank you guys for coming